also taking a hit. Emmanuel Stewart died. Stewart trained 41 world champions, 41. His sister telling the Detroit Free Press last month that her brother was hospitalized in Chicago after undergoing stomach surgery. The 68-year-old never recovered. 15 rounds does not even begin to fully tell Stewart's story. Jeremy Schapp with a fighting chance. In a city that gave the world both Joe Lewis and Ray Robinson, quite possibly the two greatest fighters ever, it was Emmanuel Stewart more than anyone else who kept Detroit's boxing culture alive and flourishing, even as the city was gasping for air. Kronk, the gym he built into a cradle of champions, was to boxing in the late 20th century what Stillman's gym on Manhattan's 8th Avenue had been to the sport in its heyday. For a young fighter of the modern era, Kronk was the ultimate training ground, and Stewart the ultimate trainer. Stewart would eventually work the corner for heavyweight champions such as Michael Moore, Lennox Lewis, and Vladimir Klitschko. But the champion he was most closely associated with, the one he fashioned into one of the most ferocious punchers ever, his masterpiece, that was Thomas Hearns. It was Hearns's good fortune, and Stewart's as well, that in the 1980s, the sport's greatest talents weren't the big men, but instead men closer to Hearns's weight, if not his height. Four all-time greats, Hearns, Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, and Marvin Hagler, squared off in a decade-long round robin that produced some of boxing's greatest encounters. Years after Hearns lost his epic 1981 battle with Leonard, Stewart said, say what you will, that was the last great fight. It was hard to disagree. But for every Hearns and every Lewis and every Klitschko, there were hundreds of young men Stewart guided not to world titles, but off the streets, away from drugs and crime. As the late Ralph Wiley wrote, Stewart saved many from fates worse than death and from death itself. Stewart's own boxing career had sputtered in his youth but he was an undisputed champion of the disenfranchised. Later in life, Stewart was perhaps the sport's most respected ambassador and a familiar presence on HBO, impeccably coiffed and tuxedoed. But the clarity and confidence of his analysis had been earned in different circumstances, in different attire. Few men were more comfortable working either the corner or the microphone at a big fight, but Stewart was a creature of the gym. If a man in a place can somehow be a single entity, so it was with Kronk and Emmanuel Stewart. Stewart stable, heavyweights, even if they didn't fight as heavyweights. Wow. And when speaking strictly about that weight class, Stewart trained heavyweights went 34, 2, and 1 in title fights. Emmanuel Stewart dead at 68.